earthlings and indeed unspecified beings on all other worlds. Uh, welcome to the latest in my series of musings on my favourite science fiction novels. This is number 12 in this series, making it a dirty dozen. So many thanks to those of you who've watched the previous ones and have left me feedback and discussion on those. I appreciate it very much. And if you're new to my channel, I hope you enjoy this video and consider subscribing and leaving a like. And if you haven't seen my previous videos on science fiction videos, uh, uh, on science fiction novels, forgive me, and short stories, then may I humbly suggest that you give them a look. Thank you very much. Just a quick note that, as always, there will be some spoilers ahead, but I will attempt to avoid the critical details. Now, today the novel I am tackling has a couple of features that are different from the others in this series so far. Firstly, it's the first one to be written and published in a language other than English originally. And secondly, unlike the other novels which I all read many years ago, I only read this one for the first time about seven years ago, so relatively fresh for me. And my chosen novel today is a classic of Russian and world science fiction, Roadside Picnic, written by the brothers Arkady and Boris Strogatsky. First published in Russia in 1972 and then in English in 1977, this has become a highly influential and rightly celebrated novel, much discussed and debated. The edition I own is a 2012 translation published by the Chicago Review Press, uh, the translation by Olina Bormashenko, and it also has a foreword by the legendary Ursula K. Le Guin, and afterward by Boris Strugatsky himself. The Strugatsky brothers hailed from Leningrad and both survived many travails, including the infamous siege of Leningrad during World War II. Uh, they began collaborating on novels in 1958 and produced almost 30 plus many short stories and plays until Arcady's death in 1991 and Boris himself passed away in 2012. Roadside Picnic became their most widely translated and published novel globally. And by the way, with apologies for my terrible pronunciation, the title in Russian is Picnic na Oboshin. So, as I say, forgive me any Russians out there that happen to catch that mangling. Um, this is a prominent work in Russian science fiction, which flourished despite the Soviet system, or some might say because of it. In fact, speculative fiction in Russia had a golden age during parts of the Soviet era, with the exception of the Stalin era. Uh, and a lengthy video could probably be made covering this Russian uh, speculative fiction history, but that's out outside the scope of this video, alas. So I want to take a look at Roadside Picnic, the novel. The story is set on Earth following the arrival and the departure two days later of extraterrestrial travelers. This visitation, as it is known, occurred in six zones across the Earth, each a few square kilometers in the area. The title of the novel is an analogy used within the book to describe the aftermath of the visitation. With discarded alien artifacts, strange and deadly phenomena, and assorted alien garbage left behind in the zones. It's like the aftermath of a human group having a messy off-road picnic. The left behind alien garbage is valuable, but potentially deadly for humans. The aliens didn't appear to even notice the human race as they made their brief truck stop. Uh, on the planet Earth, headed who knows where. The main protagonist of the story is Redrick Red Shuhart, who is a stalker in the North American Visitation Zone, which I believe is specifically meant to be Canada, somewhere in Canada. Stalkers are people who sneak into the zones, which have been sealed off by governments, to get the highly valuable artifacts for sale on the black market. 
This is highly dangerous, as within the zones, the laws of physics break down and traps are everywhere. Red has so far managed to avoid a gruesome death, and despite discouragement from his wife and the authorities, keeps on returning to the zone, more for the thrill than the money. His daughter, however, is being afflicted by an effect brought back by him from within the zones, which is sapping her humanity. There's some great dialogue in the book. Um, I particularly love Red's diatribe when pressed by the police once again to quit stalking. And he sees this lifestyle as a declaration of his independence from their control. To quote the book, How can I give up stalking when I have a family to feed? Get a job? I don't want to work for you. Your work makes me puke, do you understand? This is the way I figure it. If a man works with you, he is always working for one of you. He is a slave and nothing else. And I always wanted to be myself on my own so that I could spit at you all at your boredom and despair. And I do have to admire his um, independent, freedom-loving, um, libertarian streak there, given that it was written within a, the Soviet system. Uh, plus, he's just his really not wanting a life of boredom there as he sees it and, uh, and he, thri he thrives on the dangers despite uh, the negative effects so it's, uh, there's a lot of that kind of discussion in the, in the book, it's really really fascinating so Red journeys again and again back into the zone seeking a mythical golden sphere which through granting the finder's most deep desire may hold the answer to a cure for his daughter so the book works on, on many of these levels. It's part adventure story with tension-filled descriptions of navigating the zone through the traps and pitfalls. Dead people can come back to life in the zones or can be genetically changed, as well as meeting many gruesome ends, of course. And the wider implications for the human race are also explored in a similar fashion to novels such as Arthur C. Clarke's Rendezvous with Rama and Childhood's End. You know, humans are having to grapple with just how insignificant and primitive our species is in the galactic order, given the complete um, disdain or indeed indifference that the visiting aliens showed. And it's not a happy feeling. There are digs at the restrictions of Soviet life and Western capitalism, materialism, and it's not exactly dystopian, as the main physical impact on Earth is restricted to the zones, but it is a very, very dark story. It's hugely enjoyable, very important and influential work, and many, many other novels, movies, and even video games have been influenced by it. The book was a success in Russia and abroad. Um, I think it is the, the brother's most successful book. And in 1979, a film adaptation titled Stalker was released, directed by Andrei, Andrei uh, Tarkovsky, um, already known for his uh, adapt adaptation, which many people may have seen of Stanislaw Lem's novel Solaris, and it was working from a screenplay written by the brothers. The image on the cover of the edition I have is for a still, uh, is a still from the film. In fact, the film is quite different from the novel; it has many, many different plot elements and story elements, but um, but it is a fascinating movie nonetheless, and it's very much a, a groundbreaking work in its own right. And the Metro series of books and subsequent video games, which are all excellent, by the way, also owe a debt. Uh, indeed, a copy of the book can be seen in the game Metro 2033. Uh, the same game team also made the more directly influenced Stalker games, albeit with more of a supernatural and nuclear disaster theme than Aliens, but did uh, feature many, many of the um, elements contained within the novel. And if you look at the uh, Fallout series of games uh, and materials, they contain many element, elements also influenced by Roadside Picnic. Uh, these could be, saying to, uh, could be said that they just contain elements rather than being direct derivations, but it's certainly not hard to see uh, some of the influence in there. Um, interestingly, there. Interestingly enough, there was a pilot filmed for a uh, WGN-TV series in 2016 
but it wasn't picked up for a full show, alas, and that one actually looked like it quite an interesting cast. Could have been a, a very interesting adaptation. And most frustratingly, a 1977 Czech TV adaptation called Visit from Space was made, and then had all copies scrapped by the government censors of that country. What I would give to see that uh, now, assume, uh, now uh, gone, long gone show, if they, they reckon they scrapped all of them, but that's such a shame. In fact, there would be really uh, there would be enough material for a lengthy video about all the works that this book has influenced. But this is a series about books, so I'll leave it uh, just to talking about the novel *Roadside Picnic* today, and leave those other things for another time. Um, yes, it really is a seminal work, though. If or if you have not read it, I urge you to pick up a copy. It's certainly a unique. Uh, work. It's certainly worth reading this um, slice of Russian speculative fiction, very different in uh, style and, uh, from Western uh, novels, and that in itself, of course, is a subject for much discussion. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. Can't wait to read it again, in fact. So, uh, well, that, but that about wraps it up for Roadside Picnic. Um, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short musing, musing on this classic novel, and I will be back very soon with another science fiction classic. Till then, stay well, and remember to look to the future.